Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, everyone, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to the Naughty Orty in Conversation. And today I'm joined by Harry Cromar. Hi, Harry. Hello. Harry Cromar is a 15 year old autistic person. And today he and I are going to be having an informal chat around his schooling history, his special interests and his hopes for the future as he nears the end of uh, school. So, Harry, um, usually we begin by asking the question, uh, how and when did you discover that you were autistic? Uh, when I was 10. Yeah. It was a sort of parents finding out thing. I didn't really have um, the understanding for it back then. Okay. So what kind of things were happening around that time that led perhaps your parents to pursue an assessment for you? Um, well, they'd been wondering for a while, actually, since I was about seven, because I like, started to have a um, um, sensory issue of music, and that lasted quite a while. Um, that they found that out when I was seven that started to build up and then I sorted when it came down to social stuff everyone started noticing um, a bit of a difference how I talked and reacted to people and eventually um, because it was getting to the point where it was just significantly shown that I was different they um, went to see if I was um, autistic or not and that's how we found out. Okay. And when you um, received the diagnosis, were you were you surprised? Did you feel emotional? Was it a relief? Um, I think it was just something that I had... I guess it was an explanation to um, why things had been... I think I felt like things had been changing then. I think that just gave me an explanation for why because I was like questioning, I think. Yeah. Because I don't really remember um, too much about it. It was sort of something that was and just sort of passed by. Sure. To me. Was it something you accepted? Because um, I can remember um, being diagnosed and I didn't necessarily tell everyone about it. If it didn't come up in conversation, I wouldn't have brought it up if that made sense. Yeah. Was it was it something that you spoke a lot about or was it uh, something embraced? Yeah, I wouldn't speak about it a lot. How was that cut down? Was it really something? Hmm? Being PDA, because all cats are PDA. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't really something that I talked about in general, but it definitely um, was something that I used. Um, it was something that impacted things, definitely. Sure. Okay. Okay. But um, as you said, it was a good explanation why you were the way you were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you talked about um, kind of sensory issues around music. Mm. Um. What do you mean by that exactly? Um, just sort of, I don't remember 100% where it came from. Um, it either came from uh, bullying and experience of a teacher or some, it was something to do with primary school. Um, and uh, I don't know what it was, but so all of everything were just linked together to cause the issue. And it was, it was just sort of a building up um, mental deflection towards um, music, basically. So I just couldn't mentally stand it. Okay. And that just sort of got worse over and over time until I just could not stand listening to m almost every type of music. Uh, the only music I could stand for quite a long time was um, like heavy rock music because I had had um, good experience with, with that um, in my childhood and like Guitar Hero and things like that. That's quite interesting because a lot of people would assume that perhaps that type of music 
you would be most averse to on the basis it's quite heavy um, and loud. But obviously sensory uh, differences have nothing to do with how loud a song is, you know. Um, so I suppose your tolerance for that kind of music was born out of, I don't know, good memories playing Guitar Hero and are you presumably you're naturally into that kind of music uh, yeah 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 awesome um so so what about right now is can yeah. you listen to a wider range of music now yeah um have you i know where i was in um so reese well sort of last year i went over this um uh sort of made a thing called the roots of the autistic mind and I personally used that when I was making it to try and find out what had happened with music and why I had gone against it because the annoying the thing that was annoying for me was because I did not emotionally dislike music but because I wanted to listen to music but it was like right my ears would not allow me to almost that's really interesting i was going to say that i was going to say did it have any bearing on whether you liked it or disliked it or was it purely a matter of sensory disturbance mm. and yeah that kind of thing because i did like i've always liked music and then this comes in and stress is pretty annoying as well because yeah. along with the problems i had with that stress caused physical problems as well and other distractions to cause because stress is just horrible when it comes down to it absolutely of course it's a it's a, it's a it wreaks havoc on the body absolutely do you play any musical instruments uh, no i can't play musical yeah. instruments <laughs> you've got awesome rock star hair yeah <laughs> just putting that out there yeah I can um, do yeah I'm, i've got yeah right i can imagine you head banging I, i've got hair envy you know i'm trying to i'm trying to get to your level as fast as i can yeah. um so awesome um you mentioned difficulties socially have you any memories um from that time uh of being in difficult situations with your peers i think to start off with in primary school it was more me finding it difficult to get along with people too well with being different yeah because in primary school people weren't very accepting of difference and that led to a lot of um, avoidance for me all the way until like year nine of high school yes and you're in year nine now or you're yeah. 10 you're 10 right you're 10 um so um what so you you don't describe yourself as socially avoidant now uh yeah i'm fine being sociable to people it just depends on whether or not i can actually get to know them because most people that you come across in high school are pretty much just always into the social standing thing so they don't talk which is pretty annoying for me because I want to try and get to know people and it, because it's high school and everything going on with them, you don't really get many chances to do that. No, because there's so much social competition. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I suppose being autistic, we're not, like, we're not part of the shoal of fish, are we? We're not, we, we can't easily conform to yeah. uh, those competitions that other people, Mem other, other peers find themselves in that's why i understand that um uh do you have um close friends hey yeah i got one close friend from the last um high school i went to and i'm very glad that i got them as my close friend because one of the advantages of having autism is that you always manage to find the best friends that you can hope to have yeah I think it's more important to have few and important friends than having a load of friends that most of the time aren't actually real friends. Right, okay. I agree with you mm. wholeheartedly on that one, and I'd say a lot of autistic people would agree with you. Um, 
I suppose it's because we're not into the whole superficial chit chat thing, right? When yeah. we interact with people, we go in, we, we um, really immerse ourselves in conversations based on um, our interests and hopefully, ideally, we can share that with another person. And once we find that person, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a really, really special bond. And yeah. just a couple of those special bonds is far better than having various, you know, tenuous bonds with people. Yeah. So from, from what I've seen, having a load of friends that aren't actual friends can also be really bad for people's mental health because I used to have a good like there was a little group of us that had come from primary school to high school and were just old time friends and because of social standing they were just torn away from all of their proper friends and sort of the head was just thrown from side to side by these popular people trying to give them standards to follow and it just tears people apart and with autism i'm looking at these people finding acquaintances that are popular and they think that they're friends and then they immediately go to the worst state things because in primary school one of my best friends were, had been my best friend since primary school all the way until the very end and because they had run into a wrong group with popular people they just completely lost it and went straight to them mm. okay Gosh, that's interesting. Mm. Um, so, what are your special interests? What do you mean? Okay, so areas of extreme interest to you, like it, certain subjects or uh, just concepts that really draw you in. Um, anything to do with the mind, really, and sort of mental um, understanding, and um, maths I enjoy quite a lot, like I like learning new maths stuff. Okay, so psychology and mathematics, mm. yeah. And also, um, um, sorry, I can't. sort of uh, English, like storytelling, like because I can take a few amounts of details and sort of pile those up with different outcomes to make um, really interesting stories in my head and I like that um, sort of concept taken from words to massive uh, uh, stories. Okay, so create, so a form of like creative writing mm. kind of thing, sure. Um, and your interest in the mind um what 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 is it about the mind that that is so fascinating because i'm the same i'm the same i feel like i'm very much interested in uh personal experience other people's experiences when other people describe what's their their inner workings and processes i'm in absolute awe um also the, the the kind of um abstract nature of one's um conscious experience mm. i find fascinating um so that's what i find really interesting about the mind um what about you yeah it's all the same here one of um, the things i enjoy doing the most is um taking sort of the way the mind works and um sort of uh, using metaphors to conjure up different sort of realistic um, experiences that could be linked to sort of um, the patterns of the mind, like um, and how neurotypical and uh, neurodiverse. <laughs> All the animals are being disrupted tonight. Dog is saying hi. <laughs> oh, hi, dog. <laughs> yeah, this this is Lucy. Oh, Lucy. Incredibly loud for how small she is. <laughs> it's always the case. They've always got little dog syndrome. Yeah. 
um no that so this 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 idea this idea of um uh using metaphors to describe psychological phenomena mm. you were talking you were talking about that kind of thing yeah. now, i find that i find that quite interesting um as well actually it's i find it really really helpful to kind of um clarify and demystify um yeah. you know the uh the, the rather obscure nature of the mind so that's yeah. have you come up with any yourself uh, yeah quite a few i've done like i've done a few things with um like neuro the difference between sort of neurodiverse and neurotypical like neurotypical people are the sheep neurodiverse people are the goats that climb up a mountain and find better grass whilst the neurotypical people are eating the same grass until it goes to nothing <laughs> and um, another thing linking to that is neurotypical people go on a train that just goes in a straight line and neurodiverse people will take a hike through the mountain and everything and experience um everything that's outside of the box sort of that's amazing that's amazing so we take the scenic route mm -hmm. and we expose ourselves to the elements <laughs> Come on, Lucy. I've got a really important point to make. Oh, she's gone upstairs. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lucy. That's very, very polite. Um, so, right, we expose ourselves to the elements mm -hmm. and we are unprotected um, by, uh, you know, the, the carriage, which is protecting the neurotypicals whose experience isn't as hands on as ours. Yeah. Right? that kind of thing and the train is traveling in a straight line mm -hmm. nice one okay that's really cool and i like the goat one too and the sheep one okay that's really have you got any more i like these um some, some of the ones that i've used to describe the main one that i've used is the um, roots of the autistic mind and that's what i use to get Oh, that's what i use to get over my music problem which has been through literally half of my life so far um basically it's it's imagining drawing your yourself as a tree the roots are basically your entire mind and what i wanted to go into counseling um for to help people with is um people that are struggling to like explain how things are find about themselves it, um you, you're able to draw down everything that's about you and sort of link one thing to another so what i did so an example of that would be um sensory would be one of the roots and say so like your mind or um for me i did autism and sensory and then school and then i linked my music problem as one route linked it to the three of those and then looked back at what had happened and sort of untangled or cut the roots loose almost to get rid of um, an issue that I had. Mm, okay, I see, I see. So sort of to, sort of something to explain everything about yourself and um, sort of unearth the hidden reasons for things that might be um, happening inside of your brain this is really interesting so do you feel like you get to know yourself better through, yeah. sy through symbols mm -hmm. and it's kind of like you have to actually observe the severing of the branch yeah. in order to um, experience um, ridding yourself of anything that is mm -hmm. you know, causing persistent trouble yeah, I think that I actually just came up with um, it's uh, it, it can sort of feel like if you think it in your head, it's almost like it's going on a projector screen to the back of your to like the back of your eyes or something, and you have to see it with your like pure sight to believe it is actually real because it's like your brain is playing that, but it's not actually going through okay wow i think that's that's quite complicated 
Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. Could you maybe explain it again, just so I'm <laughs> so I'm clear? That's highbrow stuff. Yeah. So it, it's sort of like I guess the information that allows you to get rid of the issue is trying to get into your brain but if it's on a projector screen it's only going out so you can see it but it's like out of reach until you put it down it's almost like jotting it down on the outside almost is putting it into real life okay right i i've got it so you access the problem through uh, the imagery through the symbols yeah like that's the way to tackle the problem that's the way to approach the problem okay now i see now so it's trying to get in but it can't and then when you create the images and the symbols that's when you can approach yeah. that kind of thing okay now it makes sense thank you i got there in the end awesome so that is that's a remarkable special interest that's that's very that's um do you know what i mean by special interest um yeah. Or the, like autistic people getting special interest usually it's like well it could be any to be honest it could be absolutely anything anime snails hmm. freddie mercury but yeah your one is unusual in a really good way you know that really got me thinking so that's great stuff hmm. um is there anything you want to do with that special interest um well so far and i've already helped my mum with her phd with it so <laughs> i really? guess um it's a uh, definitely very useful one for me as well so i'm hoping to become um have a help with um autistic counseling work or become an autistic counselor to get the ideas out there and help people understand themselves and everything sure sure have you because i think it'd be useful for autistic people because many autistic people have difficulties with introspection and interoception so perhaps the ability to analyze oneself and the ability to um um well and alexithymia the bit the ability to identify and articulate one's emotional experiences so mm -hmm. perhaps with these symbols this is a good way to give people like the vocabulary for what they're experiencing yeah so would you um do you have a name for it at all for this potential form of uh, counselling? Like, have you given it a name yet? Um, I think what is current. I think what the base that it is um, currently under is um, sort of creative counselling at the moment. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll see at some point. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, plenty of time to come up with a name, but mm. that was a mind-blowing concept harry mm. awesome so you're in um you're in year 10 and mm -hmm. um, what kind of school are you at um sort of a specialist um school there's a only like 40 people there mm. and it's a big difference from going from a mainstream school because mainstream is like a big mess and you can't really get anything done. And then in a, the specialist school, you can sort of focus on work and get specific work done instead of having to, having your brain spinning around and around. Yeah, I agree. And you like having it, you know, with fewer people, sm smaller mm. classes, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's far less overwhelming. Um, and the, the the teachers are they are they all right yeah the understanding are they yeah they're, they're much better yeah because gosh many of us have very horrific experiences with teachers as well yeah i've been through some bad teachers yeah yeah uh, one of them actually managed to make my music pro problem significantly worse in primary school because i had to have head um, ear defenders on otherwise I went through a lot of stress in primary school this one teacher would just grab them and hide them on high places and specifically force um forcefully put a radio on pretty high volumes and lock the door that was not fun no 
Oh, goodness me. Mm -hmm. The word arsehole doesn't begin to describe. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, and in um, high school, um wasn't as bad, but I definitely had to force my way out of a room to get away from music. Oh, gosh. Basically, we had these, this massive room that if you went, if you just snap your finger, it echo like 15 times around the room and big speaker in the middle of the room and everyone with instruments. And I was forced to go in there when I specifically wanted to go out of there because they knew that I had a music problem. And because they were neurotypical, they did not know how to understand that. And they said, oh, it's a problem, get over it by experience, when they were making it multiple times worse with every single episode. Literally, add, to be fair, like adding years onto a problem. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, it's unacceptable. It's, it's absolutely disgraceful um, how much trauma these imbeciles inflict upon so many neurodivergent people, mm. children even. But I was just thinking, like, did they, so the, pe the, the second example you gave, these teachers knew you had the problem with music, mm -hmm. right? but the person you were speaking about in the first example, did that person know you were autistic? Um, they did know, but they refused to care about it whatsoever, I think. And a teacher before that did not know I was autistic. And when I was in year two, this teacher, I don't know why they did this, but they specifically picked on me. In year two, they were calling me stupid, getting me to shut up um, every single day, causing me serious trauma. Yeah. No reason, and I did not understand why. And that makes it even more traumatic when yeah. you don't understand why, you don't understand what's going on, because we can't understand ourselves. They um, they also gave me trust issues with people for quite a while, until probably high school, um, because even though they were doing all of that, all of the rest of the teachers did not listen to me when I was complaining. They all just took it to bad behaviour and punished me, and that went straight to home as well, because teachers specifically put up an argument and teachers primary school teachers especially they all almost always get the way because they know how to convince parents how to do that i'm very glad that they don't do that anymore it's like a culling of the autistic psyche you know that's that's how i see it it's not like culling in a physical sense but they're unconsciously culling the autistic psyche or the autistic spirit um and before we even realize um who we are as autistic people before we even have a word to describe ourselves we kind of feel like broken and different anyway i mean the word you used was different right yeah i can remember feeling like gosh i'm like a malfunctioned human being like, i don't understand you know why i find these types of why do i find the situations so immensely difficult that other people seem to find very, very easy, right? I remember yeah. wondering things like that. So I must be broken in some way. But then on top of that, when we're vulnerable and scared, we're being punished for it. Mm. So there's no escape, is there? Yeah. The the uh, malfunctioning thing. I didn't. I've not. I've never felt that mentally, but I have felt that um, physically because. I've got hypermobility and just right. general annoying joints and um, sort of a, I've got a phlegm problem and um, uh, I forgot what it's called, um, the sinus thing, uh, rhino something. Yeah. Um, so all of that combined makes it really annoying me for me to, for some reason, specifically running, nothing else other than running. Um, causes it to set off just running causes really and just out of breath and um sort of knee and sort of um thigh pain that it's just sort of like a really bad bad like cramp just mm, immediately just stopping me from running hmm. gosh and presumably when you were in pe this yeah. was that would have been um, 
you know, difficult. Mm. But what's the point is, it goes on and off. So I can either run really badly one day and then beat almost everyone else in a race the next. Oh, gosh. It's and so, I, yeah, I under, from, from what I've um, read up on um, uh, EDS, uh, it, inconsistency seems to mm. be the theme. So now, presumably, the teachers who were unsympathetic and unforgiving about the way you were mm. would have found the inconsistency difficult to accept you know like oh how come you can run really well one day and then the next you can't so did they find that hard to understand and accept um, well they in pri it was only a problem in primary school and in, in high school the um pe teachers were really um sort of they would always be good at um teaching and accepting people okay which was which was really good everyone would always look forward to like everyone with autism and other um, mental differences and everyone who was um, neurotypical as well everyone would just enjoy PE because it was a good experience in, pri in um, high school primary school was a different reason um one of the main things was you were forced to complete um what's it called uh the free free country thing cross-country thing at school which was in primary school a 1.8k meter run you were forced to do that until you were just panting your heart out which was horrible and in PE with the teachers with me specifically my experience with breathing leg annoyances they would always sort of punish me for that thinking that it was refusing to do PE mm. and actually it was something that I could not physically do because it brought a lot of pain and most of the time literally could not move my legs enough yeah I always say to people n always assume that a person's um, complaints are valid and genuine Mm. the cost of assuming that someone is faking it or exaggerating yeah. is too great mm. you know, it's it's it, it's far too great a cost to just assume someone is putting something on i think it's very dangerous when people say oh yeah. them. oh it, it, was, it was definitely not like that for me with the teachers because i they ended up giving me pretty bad um trust issues because of that as well because they ended up just specifically calling me a liar for everything and because pr i'm pretty sure i did have anxiety in primary school mm. pretty sure that's what i did have because um and in primary school i had a nervous laughter thing i think so okay. and they immediately took that to lying and they ended up not trusting me at all and just sorry um you had a nervous laughter thing and they assumed you were you, you were lying yeah the, mean, the teachers just constantly in primary school refused to believe me and um what well, i don't know why oh sorry sorry um, i think i understand so they would have interrogated you about something and this would have um triggered the laughter mm. and because of which they assumed that you must have been lying because you were laughing yeah. okay i see and also, I don't know why this um, experience just constantly pops back up in my head. Um, but this one time, um, I don't know how someone, um, I forgot what swear word it was, but um, they, this one kid ended up taking um, good game after a football match to, I think it was the F word. Um, and then they took that to a teacher for no reason. I'm pretty sure they knew that it, I did not say that, mm. um, but they took that to one of the teachers and they immediately just got me into major trouble for no reason. And that oh. is basically what happened in every single instance oh, no. throughout all of primary school. Almost every week would just be another stupid problem that came out of nowhere.
and the teachers would believe the accusers. Yeah, the, I don't even remember a single time they would believe me over everything. Well, so they, it was obvious they had it in for you. They had a, an anti-Harry agenda. Pretty much. I know all about anti-Harry agendas. <laughs> yeah. I know them very, very well. Um, oh, man, that sucks. Because as an autistic person, oh, I can feel the injustice. It's mm. driving me nuts. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. That must have been so mm. frustrating and soul-crushing. Yeah. And uh, high school was the most frustrating thing because... I was getting frustrated because uh, my my sinus and everything problems got ten times worse. Um, like honestly, when I was doing even a small amount of PE, it could either feel like major asthma at one point and then not even exist the next, and um, a phlegm problem started. So, um, I could either have just gurgling on the stuff is disgusting and horrible um and that just stops me from breathing even more uh, it got so point it got horrible at one point like it was i remember one night was just horrible i woke up i had had a phlegm sort of reaction and i could be i literally could not breathe it breathed i had to like spit out all of this disgusting phlegm I was literally choking in my sleep pretty much. It was horrible. It's like there was no respite. It's like you were having problems socially, you were having problems with the teachers. Yeah. And then there's the physical health concerns as well. So, yeah. gosh, Harry, like, when did you have a break from all of this stuff? Like, was there anything that <laughs> gave you some kind of solace or? Yeah, the moment I was able to. I can't say names, but the moment I was able to meet my best friend, that was finally finally an escape from things, because I was able to talk to someone. And honestly, I, I had not been able to talk to anyone properly ever since that point. Okay, and when was this? Um, sort of the, like a fifth of the way through year eight. Okay, got it, got it. We're pretty far into it. Sure, so about a year and a half ago. Mm. So oh, that's good news. Yeah, I was able to talk to them, but it was still not enough. They had autism as well. They've got anxiety as well, pretty severe, a general anxiety and um, sort of social anxiety. And I'm fairly glad that I've been able to help them through that as well. Because I feel like I've been able to connect with them and they've been able to connect with me as well. Which yeah, is absolutely. A real good break from the stress of high school. Um, another one of my friends, they're not the talkative type, but they were definitely um, a good, uh, interesting friend to have there. Then, um, the moment I get into year nine, they both leave. Oh. And year nine is the worst. <laughs> so I get into all of this extra work we get given extra homework and extra work. I have to go through that. And I get more stressed out with new teachers that don't understand anyone. Um, so, and student, year nine high school students do not like to be nice. So got stress from students, stress from teachers, stress from work, stress from phlegm, sinus thing, uh, hypermobility everything and then because of the stress from that that ended up making my back muscles tense i went through a three or four inch growth spurt whilst it was the summer holidays so i was stuck at home not doing anything um so back basically stretched like a rag doll almost pretty much that's how it felt like it felt like my back had just been crunched and stretched for over a year because I had muscle tense issues with it because of the stress. Um, just general joint pain from the amount of tensing and annoyance. Um, it went to the point where I could not walk some days properly. Yeah. And uh, my back was in constant pain no matter what position I went in. And 
the day one the day that I left the high school was the worst day I'd ever been through. Um every single one of my problems was twice as worse that day. My back problem was three times as worse. And I had a stupid eye problem where I could barely open my eyes because my eyes were apparently stinging like hell that day for no reason. Oh my gosh. It literally felt like someone that had put chili on the hand and blown it into my eyes. My eyes were watering all day and I could not, like, I tried opening them at different points to try and see where I was going and it was literally quicker than a gun can shoot. Like, imagine an SMG shooting, just eyes fluttering up and down. I could bear, I lit, my eyelids would not open. They generally would not physically open. They were just constantly like flickering. Oh my gosh. So that was the end day for high school for me. So just non-stop torture. Yeah. Physically, emotionally, mentally. Mm. And then literally only a few months after I left, back problems, everything clears up because my stress is gone. M almost everything was multiplied by the stress. And I was able to get, and I was able to concentrate on work. I was able to concentrate on um, the counselling stuff, which I got into. And, and the moment I was able to understand things properly, um, I was able to get rid of them. Um, and the funny thing is, I spend seven years with a music problem. I get rid of it in less than two days because of the roots of the mind problem. They're just doing that. <sighs> Goodness me. That's... I don't, I don't know where to begin. Mm. Okay. So the roots of the mind thing really is a saviour. Yeah. Like academically and in terms of, gosh physiological and psychological health as well mm -hmm. academically to your to your mum as you said so mm -hmm. this is this is great this thing has a ticket on it i mean i'm i mean that sounds rough that sounds like heavy 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 stuff you went yeah. through i mean um, finally got on my break at least yeah exactly and you know how are you, how are you feeling now uh, really good that's good that's good to know that's really good to know um and do you um do you feel like looking back that you have this sense of why did that have to happen or do you have more of a sense of well i learned a lot of important lessons through all of that hardship yeah it's a horrible experience to go through but i mean it's worth it to have the experience to be honest i mean especially as experience like how old am i at the moment experience is really worth it because i've got the rest of my life ahead of me yes you do absolutely but when you actually look at it the more experience you have is the better because it more prepares you for things later on sure I, i'm i'm sure that's it actually um you've taken some heavy blows from life and yeah, I'm sure, if anything, that has prepared you for the adult world more than just going to school like a like a neurotypical person mm. without many um, harrowing incidents befalling them. So yeah. that makes sense. That's one way to prepare yourself. And it's just phenomenal that you're feeling fairly happy now. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I suppose at this point we can turn our attention to the future. Do you, you've talked, you've spoken about this, um, roots of the mind thing. Um, do you have any other ambitions looking, looking ahead? Um, University or, you know, things like that. I'm going to try and go into the sixth, um, form in the specialist school because, um, I think that would help me get things done as well yeah yeah so that would be in the next couple of years or so would it yeah yeah and then beyond that do you do you like to think beyond that or are you open to whatever happens really um a bit of both 
bit of both, yeah. No, it's fair enough. It seems sensible enough. Mm. Cool. Um, so you were met, you were talking earlier that apart from uh, this the roots of the mind stuff, you also enjoy maths. Mm. What, what's what's that um, about? Is that a sense of finding I don't know comfort in the in a numerical world? Like, do you like the like the, the logic of, of maths? Is it satisfying, or is it something you've always just been good at? Well, it's uh, I guess it's something that um, it, one of the things is um, maths is something that I can easily learn and um, remember because um, actually another one of the things I am sort of using is um, trying to picture inside of my mind sort of trying to because I have problems with um, putting my thoughts in um, a process so for me it's um, actually in the last call that um, this thing I explained um, is sort of like a whirlpool with all of everything in your mind is in that and all of the thoughts sort of I'm trying to fish them out of that to see to sort of work things out and I found um, maths it sort of just clicks for me like it's sort of everything else is in like a whirlpool and that sort of goes almost a screen that's easy for me to read almost right okay it's difficult for me to put anything else on that screen that makes sense that makes total sense okay so it's more of an affinity with numbers than other kinds of thoughts mm. okay awesome um and you also mentioned creative writing you know what what kind of kinds of things have you written um not written too much it's a, i mainly do it when it comes to um stories you know like in english lessons where yeah. you have to sort of take this and write sort of a paragraph or two about it mm. and what i do is just take like a picture or something write a story on that um i cannot do that with dystopian stuff i don't know why it just does not click with me at all mm. um like one of the things was we looked at this like giant floating city with like the sides of loads of metal like little buildings here and there i could not describe that whatsoever i couldn't find anything to describe that and then i look at sort of um an old victorian style road that's just like five houses long. Mm. This was like a gateway that goes to fog and I can write page, 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 page on that, um, describing on every single detail. And sort of almost making a story along with that. So, okay. Why do you think that uh, allows you to get into your flow more easily? you've thought about it before not too sure yeah i think it's um i guess just a genre like that um i'm sort of that i enjoy or easily connect to okay. it's one of those things that's just that clicks yeah okay that makes sense um and when you get into that kind of flow um does it um is it how long does it last? Like, um, could you find your like? Is it how do I how do I describe this? Does it last a long time? Like, or is it like through short bursts? Can you come back to it? It's basically until a teacher goes, time to stop. Right. Okay. Because I was going to say because for some for some autistic people, once we're in that state of flow. Oh gosh, we don't want to come out of it. No, right? really don't. <laughs> yeah. So, because I'm just trying to imagine being in a situation where the teacher kind of says stop. See, I don't like the sound of that because I want to keep going. If it hasn't um, 
reached a logical conclusion. Yeah. No, 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 no. I've got to finish it. I've got to finish it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. And have you ever have you ever ridden it out before until the end? Very few times. <laughs> but um, a, a couple of times I've been able to. It's something that I really enjoy um, doing. Or if it's like writing it from a piece and if like if i read it out again or it's connected to a book and we're going along the book again i can sort of jump back into it okay for me if i'm taking it from a picture i can't do that but because with a picture it's basically like i've got an infinite amount of stories that i could come up with with different endings and different um like down to like the different words and I am trying to pick out which one I'm going to write down. And when I get into the zone, it's after I've picked one out and I've been able to grab onto it and write it down. It's almost like it's I've picked it out. It's like on a wire to the pen and it's just flowing through onto the pages. Right, okay. That's very descriptive. I got that. Yeah. And that's why it's not nice to come out of it, right? Because it's like such a blissful place yeah. to be in you know it's, it's uh, kind of like being short-circuited i guess <laughs> i like it i like it ah oh, cool what haven't we spoken about that's the question mm. is there anything you feel um we haven't spoken about that you'd like to speak about uh, not sure not to put you under any pressure that's all right. Um, not sure, I guess. When we've talked over the big pictures, I guess. Big pictures, yeah, big stuff. Um, I suppose, um, because a lot of people watching will be um, autistic and other people will be parents of autistic um, children. I suppose we could ask questions that may be of, of interest. Um, so I suppose I'll answer a couple of questions. On a sensory level, what do you do to regulate yourself? So like my desk is just littered with all of these objects that I can just pick up and, you mm. know, fiddle around with. Um, is there anything like, or, you know, and also I, I like to pace, you know, so if I feel like I have this surplus of energy, mm. you know, I'll take myself out for a little pace around. Um, singing and music is very important for me in order to regulate myself. So what kinds of things do you do? I think the uh, pacing is definitely one for me. I'll just walk around in a circle around random things. Um, if I'm getting annoyed, I'll find like a table, a chair, something in a room, and just walk in and out and around that a few times and find something to do. Sure. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I can relate to that a lot. And um, another thing is, I think, just creating something random. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anything can be a, a stim, really. So, awesome. awesome. Um, I suppose... Do you think... This, this, this may be um, a, a difficult question, but I'm not sure. Is there any way that a regular mainstream school could work for an autistic person? I think so. It, I think it, it really depends on how, like, the work is given to them and sort of how they're... It, almost the difference between being placed in a room or placed somewhere and being thrown somewhere okay like, the main problem of mainstream schools i think is that it mainly feels like you're being thrown places instead of you're going there right so it's like um being dragged as opposed to being escorted kind of thing mm. yeah. yeah right so that's the thing because obviously um i'm i'm 28 you're 15 so for me primary is um <laughs> decades away um but for you 
it was a few years ago. So yeah. what are teachers doing wrong? Um, not understanding people properly. And one of the main things I've seen so far is um, teachers sort of linking things to bad behaviour immediately instead of hearing people out because most of the time teachers don't actually ask questions about things or even try and find out whether someone is doing something deliberately or there's something going on with them and almost all of the time it's never to do with behavior mm -hmm. uh, with people with autism and different um, stuff going on it's almost never ever behavior and what i saw in high school was every i tried explain i've tried explaining this to teachers and i've tried my best to help people with autism out um one of the main times this happened um, was actually on um, a school trip one of my friends has autism um and with i think they've got something else but with with that comes um pretty high um, emotional imbalance for them mm -hmm. and when we're on a school trip um they were getting homesick and teachers were just pushing them aside uh, uh, telling them to get over it when because they have autism and other needs um it was way worse than anyone else was it uh, was aware of mm -hmm. but i was aware of that and they ran away from um, the dorms where we were at and I had to chase after them like pretty much there was this area I forgot what the place was called um basically there's dorms and then a pathway going straight to sort of the farmland and there's um barbed wire fences going to that well not really barbed wire just the little lines that catch on to, um sheep pretty much um and they were trying to go that way thinking like they were at the point where they thought that that was the way home and they were going to go over the fence and just straight into nowhere farmland and i had to calm them down because they were that away from things they were in tears and over there like there was i found them stood at the fence and i had to get them back and um talk to them for about an hour and a half um in that spot getting and them to calm down that's i mean that that shows remarkable empathy mm. um, but i suppose you could re uh, speak to them in a way that i guess yeah you just couldn't kind of thing mm. um yeah i i totally agree with you um the staff are too quick to make assumptions based on good and bad behavior models when really what they should be doing is making the effort to look beyond the behavior and understand why it is people behave the way they do mm. yeah awesome and i have been able to succeed in teaching some teachers how to behavior around people with autism Wonderful. Uh, it's very difficult to do that though um but the times that I've been able to succeed in getting them to treat people properly, um, it's always worth it because it just immediately yeah. makes everyone else happy. I mean, how do they respond when, you know, a student attempts to teach them? Do they see denial. It? Sorry? <laughs> Heavy denial. That's what I mean, you know, because yeah. they know you know more than them. That's the thing. It's, yeah. it's intimidating. Yeah. What, what's really funny though um it was a few times when we got new teachers especially in my old high school maths teachers that were um subs subs to fill in for the teachers um it's uh funny when you end up teaching them the math yes um that's happened quite more times than it should have done <laughs> i'm sure but, Sure. Ah, oh, Harry Cromer.
thank you so much for sharing your story with me tonight. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who tuned in this evening or afternoon, morning, whatever time of day it is for you. Um, I'll see you all next week um, uh, for uh, in conversation with the naughty Aughty. Thank you.